Um, first off, I'd like to thank Feroz and the team at IIS 2016 for giving me this opportunity to share the stage with so many amazing and awesome people. Um, I'm from SAP Canada in Vancouver, but I wasn't born in Canada. I was born in a small yet beautiful island in the South Pacific called Fiji. Now, my parents got divorced when I was very young, and my uncle took on the role as father, so much so that I called him dad. We didn't have the best of everything growing up. I didn't have the latest toys or um, any of the best things, but I had one thing. I had the best family ever. We always seemed to have good food, lots of laughs, and lots of hugs. All I saw was positivity, and all I felt was love. That somehow became the vision for my life. When I was 11 years old, my dad passed away in a car accident caused by a drunk driver on New Year's Day. That day set in motion a chain of events that has shaped my life. A little, all of the love and positivity that was ingrained in me allowed me to mourn for this incredible loss, but also made me hopeful for the future. A little after my 12th birthday, my mom and I moved to San Francisco in search of a better life and better opportunities. And we found them. In high school, I even met former US President Bill Clinton while he was touring San Francisco, talking about the information superhighway. And I got a job at Cisco Systems, a major player in the tech industry. Unfortunately, in a freak accident, my mom fell and hurt her back and was unable to work. So at the age of 18, I was going to school and working and supporting the both of us. A few years later, I made a decision, the best decision of my life, actually. I moved to Canada. There, I'm, I found a great career at SAP. I made amazing friends, and I discovered volleyball. Now, I had made a great life for myself, but there was something going on. I was feeling quite stagnant, like I wasn't moving forward, almost like I didn't have control over my life. So I decided to go back to Fiji, to my roots. I hung out with my family and did amazing things there, like skydiving and whitewater rafting and jet skiing. And I had a great time. And he started to realize that I was supported by, loved and supported by so many people in my life. And I actually started to feel good about life again. Life, however, had other plans for me. And on a cold morning in February of 2011, I woke up with the chills. I thought I had the flu, but I had a volleyball tournament to play. So I took some cold medication, and I went off to play. When I got back, I still wasn't feeling well, and my mom kept bugging me about going to the doctor or the hospital, but the know-it-all that I am decided it was just a flu and I would sleep it off. But by 11 o'clock that same night, I wasn't able to breathe well. And so that's when I knew something was terribly wrong. I was rushed to the hospital and almost immediately put on life support. We still don't know what caused the pneumococcal pneumonia that led to such an acute onset of septic shock. But after two weeks in a coma, I miraculously woke up. We won that volleyball tournament, by the way. <laughs> Now, I had no idea about anything. No one, no one would tell me anything, but I slowly started getting some idea as to what, was, what my family and my mom had been through. You see, my mom, she's right there. She's the sweetest person ever. And I knew she was strong because as a single mom, she had moved to a different country to create a better life for herself and a child. But she doesn't appear outwardly strong. What gave me a deep respect for what gave me a deep respect for her strength is what she told me. She said, when the doctors told her that I wouldn't survive, that she needed to prepare for my funeral, she lost it, naturally. But she gathered whatever strength she had and came to sit by my bedside to talk to me, potentially for one last time. And she said, she told me, Beta, I love you, and it's okay. It's okay. If you're in pain, it's okay to let go. But if you can, talk to God one last time 
and tell God that your mommy will be very sad and very lonely, and if possible, to send you back. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember my conversation with God. What I do remember is seeing everything as white, and I felt immense love. And then the next thing I remember is the doctors pulling the intubation tube out of my throat and cheering and high-fiving each other. Now, in my entire stay in hospital, my family was by my side. From the moment I woke up to the moment I fell asleep, I didn't have hospital food, not once. As strong and as positive and surrounded by love as I was, I had a complete meltdown one day during, during my stay in hospital. Like full on, ugly crying, asking God why, you know, realizing that I'd ruined my life. And in full Canadian fashion, I was apologizing to everyone. I was devastated because I realized that I wouldn't be able to support my mom anymore. I was saddened by the fact that I wouldn't be able to do things around the house like take out the garbage or carry heavy groceries. And I was mortified that I would need help for the rest of my life. People around me were trying to console me, telling me that they loved me and that they supported me and that I would never have to ask for help. But I heard none of it. I actually passed out from all of the crying. When I came to, something happened. It seemed like the things that people were telling me had finally sunk in. And I realized that I wasn't alone, and my fear disappeared. And from the courage emerged clarity. I knew that there were so many people behind me, supporting me, and would help me down the path I needed to follow and through any challenge that I would have to face. And I made a decision that day. I chose happiness. I didn't want sadness or depression to determine my future. I wanted to be happy. And so I started jotting down notes from surgical options that I had to making arrangements at home to make it more suitable for me to setting goals for my recovery. It's almost like I started taking control of my life again. When I, while I was in hospital, I knew I had to set some goals for myself. I spent almost three and a half years in hospital and rehabilitation and through surgeries, through numerous setbacks and progress and blood, sweat and tears. I wanted to get back to life. I wanted to become independent again and become a valuable member of society. I wanted to get back to work at SAP. SAP after three and a half years of going through all of that, I finally achieved my goal. I made it back to SAP. I made it back to work. Now, I don't know how many people can say this about the company that they work for, but SAP has been by my side the entire way. My colleagues and my friends would come visit me in the hospital. My managers would come visit me in the hospital or at home and reassure me that all I needed to worry about was my recovery, just to focus on my recovery, that my job was secure. They even got together and got me an iPad so I could use that to communicate with people because I had hypersensitivity in my fingers and I couldn't use a regular keyboard. They kept me in the loop of everything that was going on at work. While a lot of things had changed in my life, they didn't treat me any differently. We worked on a gradual return to work program and all of the comforts were taken into consideration to make my return easy. When I got back, no one treated me any differently. Even the guys that I played foosball with treated me no differently, teasing me like normal if I sucked. Now, everything was going well at work, but I had another goal in my mind that I needed to achieve. I was very independent before I got sick, and I was fearing that after losing my legs that I would become very dependent and I would need help. So in my mind, I said, if I got physically fit again, I would, do, I would be able to do almost everything myself. And then asking for that one-off help wouldn't feel as bad. In that pursuit, my physiotherapist, Linda, who is an amazing lady, she sent me a request to try out sitting volleyball. It's an adaptive version of standing volleyball. Now, before my illness, I loved volleyball with a passion. 
I knew I started late in life, and I couldn't do anything serious with it, but it brought me so much joy to play. And after I got sick, the thought that I couldn't play volleyball again absolutely broke my heart. As positive as I was, I couldn't handle anything volleyball related. A lot of my friends encouraged me to try it, but there was one in particular who literally told me to suck it up and do it, because in his mind's eye, he saw me accepting a medal for it one day on a podium. Almost to shut him up, I did, and I loved it immediately. Sitting volleyball has given me so many things. It's given me a group of beautiful women who have similar abilities as myself, who can understand any challenge that I face and can relate to any issues that I encounter. They supported me in learning the sport and getting better at it. And after I decided to join the team, I've been able to travel the world and play a sport that I love. I even got my family involved to come to practices. One of my best friends, Fayaz, who is nothing short of a savior for my mom and I, he comes to help out and in the process, he improved his own skills. Now, as, as the progress was going on with volleyball, I still worried about how I would handle home responsibilities, work responsibilities, and training for a sport. So my mom sat me down, quite literally, saying she supported me, that she saw the brightness in my face when I played, and she supported my decision to play. And SAP, again, was behind me, saying, go, go ahead and do it. All I needed was time off, and they gave me time off above and beyond normal so that I could train and compete. And because of all of the love and support that I received, I was able to pursue this path fearlessly. And because of that, in 2015, my team won bronze at the Toronto Parapan American Games. And as of September of this year, I was able to represent my country at the Paralympic Games in Rio, and I am now a proud Paralympian. A lovely lady I met throughout this journey told me that the Paralympics are the Olympics for athletes who have already overcome life's greatest challenges. We all face challenges. Sometimes we need help. Sometimes we can offer help. Yes, I have amazing people in my life, but in order for me to be successful, I had to meet them halfway. It's difficult for people genuinely want to help, but sometimes offering help can be misunderstood, so there's a bit of fear there. I had to learn to be able to accept the help that I was given and ask for help when I needed it. If you're in a position as I am in, I hope you realize a few things. Acceptance is liberating. Strength, there is strength in asking for and accepting help. And by staying positive and open to new opportunities, amazing things can happen. Don't, don't set yourself back because of any perceived limits that you think you have. Your capabilities are limitless. And if you're able, reach out. Reach out to your community. Talk about your experience. Bring awareness to what you've been through. I get so much joy in sharing my story with people. I'm a peer visitor. I talk to people who are going through impending limb loss or have already lost a limb. I teach kids with uh, different abilities to play sitting volleyball. And I participate in support groups. If you're in a position to, in the blessed position to offer help, reach out. Love and support start at home. There's always fear in asking for help, especially from a person like myself who was very independent before. But if you can, reach out. But also be open to the possibility that the other person will say no thank you. My family knows. I tell them no thank you all the time. They always try to do everything for me, but I tell them that, you know what, let me try it myself. Be there to help me, but don't try to do it for me. And if you can, reach out to your community, because not everybody is as fortunate as myself and as a lot of you to have the love and support at home. But with that, anyone can overcome any challenge. I know I did. Thank you. Good. Ah. 
फर्क नहीं कर्म है खुदा का फील प्राइड मी फील प्राइड इन यू फील प्राइड इन फील प्राइड दैट्स माय नंबर फील प्राइड मी फील प्राइड 